Hello, natural farmers. It's June 26th. You may be thinking that you're looking at a big pile of weeds. Uh, but this is uh, some lettuce that got chopped down. And then uh, the next thing I'm trying to do here is okra. Uh, I'm a little late at getting some stuff in. Uh, and that's that a that's not that big of a problem because uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit today about ways of uh, planting later in the season when you still want to get things going or when you want to get things going in succession and how to do that without using a lot of water. So I guess what I'm referring to is sort of what my situation is here, which is that uh, it has not rained in about a week. Uh, it, did, it did rain yesterday, sorry. But uh, since then it hadn't rained for about a week. And so, you know, things start getting a little thirsty. And uh, yeah, I'm not... I hadn't watered much until just this, this past little while here, because uh, it does just rain pretty consistently. Anyway, um, so I've got some stuff I put in, and so my strategy with this kind of stuff, let me zoom in and show you what I'm looking at. There. You might not be able to tell, but there's a little mound that I've made here that I've then covered up with just, you know, whatever organic material I had hanging around. And uh, there's another one there. Um, I think this is uh, some more um, like candy stick type uh, pepo. So uh, anyway, yeah, what I did, I did not dig into the soil. This is all just building up. Basically, pick a spot. So I, I scythed everything down to get it sort of as bare as possible without actually digging. So no dig, no dirt. Do not disturb the soil. Uh, and then just putting a little bit of dirt on top of this building, a little pile on top. About as much as you think the seed would need. Uh, and then you just go through and water those. And uh, I like to plant a little bit of extra stuff you can see some other seeds about to germinate in there. Because it's like, uh, anytime you got a you know, bare little spot here, you'll see it just uh, you know, seeded in. A bunch of whatever I have on hand, whatever the next vegetable might be. This is uh, just trying to get a vegetable forest. Trying to inundate the seed bank with as many vegetable seeds as possible so that it's nothing but stuff you want that's the that's the, that's the basic idea uh, and so a lot of scattering seeds a lot of volunteering stuff like that so I got some patches I'm gonna plan into uh, perhaps I'll demonstrate this method but yeah, you scythe, scythe down a patch uh, and then put your, I do them pre-sprouted pre a little bit, uh, or at least, you know, soaked to the point that a tail, the root has started to come out. And uh, yeah, then go from there so you know that you're, you know, not going to be having to sit there and water for too long to get things going at first. Or that when you do water, there's a very specific place where you're doing it. Because uh, I try to rely on mostly just throwing stuff down and having grain. I'm sorry, rain, not grain. Having rain come down and sort of do, do the watering. Because I can get away with that around here. So there's a nice big squash plant. It's a volunteer, I think. I don't really recall planting it, 
but there it is, it's looking fine. No supplemental water to it. Uh, the kale is uh, starting to show a little wear and tear. Uh, as you can see, I've got a bunch planted over there too. That's all just stuff that was direct seeded, thrown onto the ground. What comes up comes up. That's what came up, so not too bad. Um, and I mean, it's starting to look a little, yeah, spotty here. I think just because it's more in the sun. Uh, potatoes are starting to go. Onions, I'll be pulling those up soon. So. Lots of stuff to sort of make a second run at right now. And your basic idea is what do you do when you want to plant into something without digging up, without hacking into the soil. And uh, I think this is, the, I think this is one way. Right, so you just you, you cut everything down. You throw down a bunch of seeds, preferably ones that are, you know that you want to get the timing right, ones that you know are going to be given a head start by free soaking if they need them, uh, and to really get as much vegetable seed in as possible. So lots of other things. They're gonna cover the germinate and cover the ground quickly. Maybe uh, will will or won't survive. We'll see. But that's the basic idea. Uh, so you pick a spot and you're you know if you're watering you're watering but you got to water there. And uh, anywhere you're watering you know throw a couple extra vegetable seeds down as well. Okay. So, let me show you an example of this planting technique. I did this here. And then put down a bunch of, uh, these are um, melon seeds from a melon grex that I grew and I've replanted. As you can see, there's various, uh, you know, kirk, not kirk, but uh, brassica looking seedlings all over the place. That's a, that's a good example of something that will sprout quickly and do its thing, get out and be alive, and then not need too much help after that, if you can kind of build a good relationship with the soil. Uh, and so I think the way to get away with growing sort of traditionally high water crops in less than, less than water soil is keep it covered. Uh, when you do induce gaps, you want to keep those covered. I mean, you can see a difference between the soil that looks moist and the soil that does not over there. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the basic idea. You want to aim towards Letting the genetics do as much as possible for you. I've given these uh, some JLF liquid fertilizer. Now's a good time to include that with some supplemental watering if you're doing that. Uh, so these are looking pretty good already getting lots of uh, patty pan out there. This one here is sort of a yeah, yellow squash, which uh, I did not plant. This I think kind of volunteered, so good for it. Uh, there's a lot of gobo, edible burdock, 
here. This is the uh, probably the end of the um, fava beans. I'll probably just cut these down, save seeds, and I don't know. Move on, do something new here. Uh, so yeah, this is, it is what it is. Uh, about the end of it, yeah, we'll sell save seeds on this, replant, and see how it goes. Okay, so here's an example of how to make a uh, clearing. So, this is a not particularly uh, being used patch. You can see there's some vegetable seed and some weeds. So, anyway, I'm gonna chop this down and we'll see how close to the dirt we can get. Okay, this is what it looks like after the preliminary, preliminary chop. Uh, underneath, what are we looking at? This is pretty nice looking soil. Yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to plant into that. Plenty of places for roots to go. So uh, I'm gonna clear this pile of debris and then maybe break it, see how, how much I can get rid of and then do another close shave. All right, there it is, before and after. Uh, now I'm gonna rake it. Okay, all raked out. Now is when you're gonna want to use the idea of lines a little bit. Uh, if you want to get this done. Uh, so, just to sort of remember where you've planted the seeds and have a sort of general strategy so you can water in a straight line and not have to use too much more water elsewhere. This is useful for doing hand watering, for example which is just, you know, if you want to get your exercise while you're at it, that's a good way of doing it. Uh, and to just kind of challenge yourself. Stardew Valley, baby. You know, this is Stardew Valley in 3D. It's called uh, Real Life. <laughs> uh, and the game is actually, I think, even interest more interesting in real life because you can save seeds and uh, manipulate the genetics of what you're working with to help work you, uh, help you work help it work in your favor so anyway uh, so I just uh, raked this out and as you can see right you got quite a bit of bare soil and that's all you really need something for your plants to lock into and you'll see you know all sorts of interesting other stuff, there's a, like a turnip or something that uh, got chopped, so just leave it, you know, nothing wrong with that being there. So plenty of vegetable, you know, whatever, kale, and that stuff will try and grow back because it's very well established and that's fun. That's just more sort of ground cover for whatever it is that you are intending to plant. There's a carrot that's going to seed. It's a nice, a nice looking plant, carrot, when it goes to flower. So, each one of those is going to be a carrot seed. Carrots, that's, you know, that can be a tricky one. But I do believe that I'll eventually get there with carrots. Already I see, you know, lots of little carrot seedlings. You probably, if you're looking, just look down, right? There's one, two right there, so a carrot has been established uh, and you know whether it will become an edible carrot or not I'm not quite sure right now I don't really have enough to say basically when I when a carrot happens I just let it do its thing go to seed most of the time I'm not looking to get too many edible carrots just yet although that's I think you know the gamble in the long run but I think it will pay off I think I'm gonna get 
carrots going in a very big way because it's a, it's just a real small seed. I think it's just a matter of uh, timing, germination, and uh, yeah, direct seeding seems to be no problem. And I mean direct, like throwing it down on the ground. That's all. Uh, and it's easy. It's an easy one to save seed on. I just save the whole thing. I'll just save, you know, this. I'll save the whole plant basically, and then cut off the uh, the flower petals. Just put them in a breathable bag or something, and come back to them later. Let them dry out in the bags, and then just. I think I've done that on cam before here. So yeah, let's uh, plan into this. So, I've just, with my hand, edged out a little space so that there's pure soil, contact with the soil, right there. And uh, that's going to be fine. Uh, here are some seeds that I soaked overnight. These are uh, Korean melon, a Grex of those. Hopefully there is some uh, pollen spreading around. Uh, might even maybe with other melons as well, regular melons. Anyway, that's what I'm going to plant in here. So there they are. They kind of stick together a little um, when they're wet like that. But if you want to seed, you can afford to seed thickly. You can be picky, pick and choose what's going on. So that's uh, how I put them in. So I've watered in my line now, and then I'm going to cover it with dirt. You don't need too much, just enough to uh, give it something to retain moisture and pop its head through once it starts growing. Any more that you can add will add, that will add, you know, uh, a little bit of moisture retention down where it's uh, going to count. So uh, if you can lump on a little more, that helps. You're just trying to go in a straight line though. Just want to take a quick moment to show you what um, kind of good soil looks like when it is in sort of its fossilized state. But just to show uh, how much how many sort of little canals there are you see all over the place. Holes, I'm not sure what caused this formation there, but anyway, yeah, this is just a piece that got ripped up and then, you know, lost its connection to the web, so to speak. And, uh, but yeah, this, this shows you how, you know, how porous the soil can be if you got things going right. So, pretty cool, it's a little something to look at. Water it in gently. There you have it, a line. Uh, yeah, that's where you're gonna know how to, where to water. That's where you can put uh, uh, stuff in the middle uh, to keep it, to keep the surrounding ground relatively uh, moist. And uh, yeah, you have a pretty clear indicator of where things are. And your stuff will come up from there. I'm going to, as soon as possible, also just plant a bunch of random little seeds on top of that. Get as much uh, human food, vegetable cover on there as possible. And uh, yeah, just keep going with that. Uh, so I'm gonna make, I think I'll do three lines. Three lines with uh, Korean melon soaked seed. Uh, we'll see how it looks when it comes up. I'm gonna fill in the gaps here and uh, we're off. Something like this. Fresh salad in the rows there. Plenty of kale. Uh, yeah, and then just leave the edges, maybe for the sides. We'll see, but you got your three general areas. Keep the other area kind of covered. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. No dig. <laughs> 